Okay, this video will be an introduction to the normal curve. And the normal curve is a really important theoretical idea in statistics and used to model data for large applications, all right? And we will use it for all sorts of things. The graph of the normal distribution is symmetrical and bell-shaped curve um, on the mean and standard deviation um, of a sample where the mean, median, and mode are exactly the same. So we're looking at a bell-shaped curve, and actually, to be truthful, it's a family of curves. So here we have a um, three approximately normal distributions. And please know that they run from negative infinity to positive infinity. Okay, so the negative infinity to positive infinity. Now, these three are all centered at the same mean. However, they have different standard deviations. And so the one with the dashed line has a half of a standard deviation. The solid line has a standard deviation of one. And the dotted line has a standard deviation of two. And you'll notice that the heights change because the, the smaller the standard deviation, the more data we have towards the center. The smaller the standard deviation, the more data we have towards the center. The larger the standard deviation, the more spread out we are. So in other words, if you take um, a curve and you squish it together, you're gonna to have a small standard deviation. If you spread it apart, you're gonna have a large standard deviation. Now, the area under the curve for all three of these is exactly one. So regardless which one we look at, these have to be valid probability distributions and probability distribution or probability density functions have the same area under the curve. So this has an area under the curve of 1.0. This one has an area of the curve under 1.0. And then obviously this one will also. Half of my data is below the mean. Half of data is above the mean. And because it's symmetric and mound shaped, we said earlier the mean and the median are, uh, the mean, the median, and the mode, the parts that occurs most are at the same uh, point. The formula, that defines the, um, the normal curve is actually fairly complicated. And once again, this uh, defines a family of functions. So this is the family, this is the formula for the normal curve. We don't have to use it in this class at all. Um, that we won't use it, we will not use it at all in this class. But every year someone asks me, what does it look like? And so we show it to them and then also in calculus BC, you'll integrate it. And what it means to integrate something is to find the area under the curve. So you'll actually find the area under the normal curve when you get into calculus BC. And as I said, it's actually a family of distributions that follows this basic uh, format. Of course, the mean and the standard deviation can vary for each one. And because there's an infinite number, uh, because the mean and standard deviation vary, there's actually an infinite number of means and standard deviations, which means there's an infinite number of curves that can be normal. However, all of them have this area under the curve. They all have an area of one. They all center about the mean and they all extend from negative infinity to infinity. So why is it powerful? Well, the normal distribution can describe many things in the world, such as scores on tests or um, things that happen in nature, such as height or weight for adult men and women. And, um, and when the mean standard deviation of a normal curve are known, then several other values can be calculated. If we know the mean and the standard deviation, we can use this formula and integrate it to find out where you where you stack up, where, where you lie percentile wise relative to everyone else. And this is an extraordinarily important concept here. Theoretically, almost all data falls within three standard deviations of the mean. If you're beyond three standard deviations one way or the other, you're an outlier, you're special. Typically in our class, we'll actually define outliers as plus or minus two standard deviations. You probably need to note that now. So the mean plus or minus two standard deviations is the way we define outliers and it's really rare um, if you're beyond three. And we'll talk more about that in the next video. 
So at this point, you're probably going, my goodness, there's an infinite number of curves. How am I ever going to learn all of that? Maybe I should be a student aide or go see the counselor. Well, the fact of the matter is, because they are normal curves and are part of a family, there's a lot of things that we actually know about them that makes this fairly easy. In fact, for all normal curves, regardless of the mean and regardless of the standard deviation, 68% of the data falls between plus or minus one standard deviation, 95% falls between plus or minus two, and 99.7 falls between plus or minus three, which is why we say it's really rare if you're beyond three standard deviations, because that's a very small area that we're talking about, okay? And, and also, as I said earlier, it helps with a bunch of different things. So it allows us to compare um, ACT scores and SAT scores using Z scores to compare the normal curves. And we looked at Z scores in a prior video. So I'm not going to touch talk uh, about them here because this is basically a continuation of what we have done earlier. So basically, a couple things that you need to know normal curve is simply mound shape. The mean is in the center of it. The mean, the median, mode are all equal. The area under the curve is one. And we extend from negative infinity to positive infinity. But there's in a whole range, okay, of normal curves or an infinite number. This 68%, 95 and 99.7, we'll talk about more in the next video. But this is known as the empirical rule. And this is something you need to memorize and familiar yourself, familiarize yourself with um, because it will be used frequently. And you're going to see more of that in the next video. Okay, thank you for watching. The next video, we will break down the empirical rule and a bunch of other things about the normal curve. Thank you.